All right, joining us now is our six-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, Jimmy Johnson, and he drives the number 48 low Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Jimmy, getting ready to start on the uh, chase uh, uh, for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, the Challenger round, a new format, a new year, and you've got a championship to defend. Just talk about your mindset as you uh, begin preparation here today at Chicagoland. Excited to get back in the car, get to work. Um, it's a much different week for all the, uh, the chasers uh, with the media circuits that we've been on. Uh, two full days uh, leading up to uh, you know, our on-track activity here today. So excited to get the racing mindset you know, back to the forefront of my mind. And uh, you know, we've all said plenty and, and it probably wore everybody out with remarks and answers and questions. And now it's time to get on the track and get to work. Take some questions for Jimmy. Uh, <coughs> Start here with Bob Pockris, and then we'll go to Jared, and then it looks like Nate Ryan's itching for once, so we'll go there. Uh, Bob morning. Pockris, Sporting News. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Yesterday you had said, kind of implied that you weren't getting any air into your helmet, but then a few days ago it was kind of that you were getting warm air into your helmet. I was curious which <laughs> which one was it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The, uh, the cool box itself has a fan in it, and then there's a fan behind it to help increase the airspeed. So there was some air coming out of it, but the AC portion of it wasn't working. So when they did a quick check of things at the track and, and initially you know, flipped the switch on, sure there was some air coming out, but as they got in deeper, pulled the cool box out, tested it, it wasn't working. <coughs> so that, that's, sorry for the confusion on all that. Yes, yes, yeah. Let's go to Jared and then Nate and then Marty. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, Jared Turner, FoxSports.com. Uh, Jimmy, how does your confidence level heading into this chase compare to other years that you've won the championship? Uh, and is there a year that it is sort of similar to that stands out? I, I don't recall the exact thoughts. Um, <clears throat> the most current thoughts would be last year's chase. And we had a, a terrible run of races leading into uh, the chase, and then we got off to a good start. and obviously won the championship. So I've been reminding myself of that. I do feel like there were a couple chases that we had momentum on our side and we came in and, and got off to a great start and won championships. Um, so it, it, it really is its own world. I mean, it, just like any other sport, when the playoffs start, you know, everything starts over on, on a clean sheet of paper. And um, you know, I've had it work either way where regular season was beneficial and momentum was on my side. I've had it where uh, regular season wasn't so good and momentum was against me uh, you know so over the 10 races a lot can happen and then this year with the format changing as dramatically as it has the uh, the opportunity for somebody to stay alive and and really you know you just need to be hot um, towards the end if not really hot at one race so uh, we'll just see how it all plays out go to Nate and then Marty and then Alan Cabana Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Uh, Jimmy, a lot of the talk yesterday was that uh, minimizing the stakes would be sort of be the key of the first round advancing, and, and Denny Hamlin actually said that he'd be probably backing off on pit road speed on Sunday just to make sure that, that there were no sorts of errors like that. Is that something that you'll be cognizant of, and you think other chase drivers will kind of be watching these first three races, just making sure you don't eliminate yourself? Yeah, but you know, that, that's just the balance that we're faced with is drivers, teams, um, and it's, it's so much easy to think big picture before an event, but when you get in the car and you know how important pit road speed is, um, you, you might forget that you, you planned on being cautious. You, know, you might forget when you're racing somebody three wide that, man, I, I thought I was just gonna be smart here. So, and, and that's the beauty of racing. We get sucked in and we race hard and, and we get all that we can. But I, I really feel that it, it isn't any different than the way you've had to win championships in the past. I mean, you have to battle that fine line of risk versus reward. And with as competitive as our garage area is, you can't leave, you can't leave a half second on pit road. You can't leave a couple tenths on the racetrack. You, you've got to somehow dial in 100% and no more. Let's go over here to the far right. Marty Smith, Alan Cabana, and then my man from EMRN. Marty Smith, ESPN. A similar question. This is a whole new world in terms of the breakdown of the chase yep. in this 10 race format, whatever. So what is your general strategy slash approach as you enter this thing? I, I think if, 
it, you know, it goes in multiple directions depending on, on your races. If you have uh, you know, first, first and second race with poor finishes and you're not looking strong in points, it's real easy for that third race, you, you need the Hail Mary to, to make something happen. If you get off to a quick start and you're solid in the points, um, you know, of course you're going to take an opportunity to win, but you, you know you're covering the base on points. So I think there are going to be multiple strategies that take place depending on performance. And then after three races, you know, you're, you're going to have to kind of re-rack and, and start over again. So uh, I, I don't know. And I think that's what makes it interesting right now is there isn't a clear strategy that, that can play out. I mean, winning races does, period. I mean, that's kind of the design of the, the format to start with. But um, you know, I think, I think it would be a stretch if somebody won three or four races in the chase. That would be really tough to do. So you're, you're going to have to kind of count on points as well. Go over here to the far left, Alan, MRN, and then Matt. Uh, Alan Kavan, NASCAR.com. Jimmy, sort of a similar question, but last year, I mean, you had seven top fives and nine top tens. You've won championships before with four or five wins. Will it take a performance similar to that to win a championship this year in this format? It's hard to say, but I'm, I'm counting on it. You know, we've seen um, a lot of strength out of teams and you know, it's just amazing to me how every year the, the competition gets more intense, um, how much more difficult it is to win, and really that average finishing <coughs> result just keeps getting to a smaller and smaller number. So, you know, I'm planning for that, and uh, hopefully we can light it up here. Go ahead, right here. Hey, Jimmy, Tyler, MRN. Every sport has rivalries, Ohio State, Michigan, Boston, Red Sox, Yankees. Right now in this championship, is it Hendrick Penske? And if it isn't, why? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, the, the only twist to that is the Stuart Haas thing, but obviously they're they're Hendrick cars. So, um, yeah, I, I would kind of feel that way when I go through my favorites and pick out my top, you know, four or five cars. They're Hendrick vehicles and, and Penske vehicles. Let's go over here to the far right. We'll go to Matt. And then we'll go to Stan. Matt Weaver, PopularSpeed.com. Jimmy, when you look at these individual brackets, each round of the chase, is there one of them that looks out to you like it's going to be more of a challenge for you and the 48 team? I think just based on the numbers, when you get to the end, you know, you have four that transfer to Homestead. So, you know, the forgive me for not knowing all the catchy names that we have, Kerry. Challenger. What's the one before Homestead? Eliminator. The Eliminator, yes. So I think when you get down to the eliminator, that uh, that better, better pack your lunch that day. <laughs> that <laughs> block of tracks, you know, just based on the numbers, there's only four transferring from there, and I'm I'm very happy with the three race tracks um, in that eliminator round. Is that right? Okay, in the eliminator round. So uh, I, I think that's you know, out of the rounds. That's probably the toughest one, but you know, you go to Homestead and truthfully that one race I guess I'm thinking differently um, I'm not sure how to quite answer your question because Homestead by far is the most difficult one um, four guys equal points but as you work through the segments I think that uh, the eliminator round is, is really the toughest because there's less cars transferring yeah um, Stan Creekmore with uh, competitionplus.com Jimmy M might be a tough question for you if you can make it to Homestead which three drivers you, would you be most um, happy to be cha you know, racing in, in, in that race? And, who do you, and which three do you think would give you the most competition in that race? I don't know the stats, but I'd want the three worst Homestead averages. <laughs> and heck, I might be in that category for all I know. Um, and then the flip would be you know, the three that, that have the best. Uh, and the 24 has always been strong there. Um, the two has been been good there if memory serves me right uh, but I, I'd just go off the stats you know that's how I'd play it let's get one more question Dean let's get two more questions Dean and then Jim yeah. over here Jimmy Dean McNulty from the Toronto Sun I know you spoke yesterday about how Chad would chastise you if he ever thought you were laying in the weeds but in the stretch from June from Michigan till now, was the team looking at doing it any R&D on setups? Were there new setups you were trying out during that period that you might not have? Yeah, I mean, with a new rules package that we have, there's been a lot of 
development going on and a lot of looking at our teammates and what works for them, kind of what showed speed for us. So yeah, absolutely. This, this year, um, I think there's been more of a moving target for, uh, for a lot of teams trying to find out what builds consistent speed in their race cars. So sure, you know, we, we've been experimenting, we've been uh, working on things, but we, we didn't consciously look at it and say, okay, we won a couple races, we're going way off in left field and trying something different. Uh, we've, we've just been racing and trying to trying to make our stuff better. So uh, I'm sure there's been development, but it hasn't been like a conscious R&D effort to, uh, you know, that would kind of explain at the root of your question, some bad results and maybe not the, the race wins or finishes that we would want. Um, I think we were competitive through most of that stretch. We just had some really funky races. You know, we had tire issues and crashed at Daytona, you know, just a lot of different things went on. So. Um, but historically, that window of time you talked about has always been a slow period for the 48 for a variety of reasons. Final question, Jim. Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer. This kind of goes back to the Homestead stat question. I think it was Brad Keselowski back at the media tour who said something when the new chase format was first announced about, I'm not really sure if we've ever seen Jimmy Johnson really have to race at Homestead. And I wondered uh, if you were to make it to the final race, being in a position where simply the highest finisher wins, would that be greatly dramatic to how you and your team have approached it, say, when you've come in with a, a certain points lead going into the last race? Yeah, it, it would change that. The, the mindset, the energy. Um, you know, we, we've been fast down there. The, the year that Brad won, uh, we were leading the race and in a position to win and had a series of mistakes that took us out of, uh, out of contention. Um, we had to go down there and race Denny once and, and got that done. Uh, last year, you know, we ran up front through the majority of the race. Uh, Matt was leading, trying to put pressure on Matt and, and chasing him around in second spot. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely feel like we can go there and, and, and win. It's not Dover for us, you know, just being honest, but it, it's still a, a strong track for us, and we can go down there and, and I think get the job done, you know, if need be.